Hey, and we are the coalition, loud and proud, outraged, porn free, civilly disobedient media, standing on, well, the benefit street steps of your Frank Leach Judicial Complex, aka known as Superior Court, Supremes. If there was, editorially, if there was truly a Mordor here in Rhode Island, it would in fact be right here. We are with, of course, Attorney, uh, Super Attorney Greg Picciarelli uh, and the casting characters, if you will, of Southwell v. McKee. Uh, Attorney Picciarelli, it appears, congratulations in honor. What happened today? So finally, after many months, eight months or more of mediation um, with the assistance of the court, uh, we finally have come to a final settlement of Saltwell versus McKee, otherwise known as the masking lawsuit in Rhode Island. What, uh, describe for us the settlement. What, uh, what's so, involved, uh, maybe a little bit of background too, which is how this all finally came to pass. And, uh, it, 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 in one sense, it's been so many months since the actual trial proceedings I don't want to use the word anticlimactic, but it seems like it went into this administrative stall for, for quite a while. Right, and part of that was because uh, during these last few months, um, well, four or five attorneys from the state have quit. <laughs> I keep Every time I seem to, we seem to be coming close to a resolution, another attorney from the AG's office or from the Department of Health just up and resigns. So, mm -hmm. And then somebody else comes in and has to get back up to speed on it. So, but the, but the final resolution, is to go back to what this lawsuit was about, um, it's just been over two, two years now, it was in August of 2021, when the governor issued a, uh, an executive order mandating masking in public schools in Rhode Island. And then shortly thereafter, the Department of Health also issued an emergency regulation to the same effect. Um, a number of parents, the two of whom are here today, um, brought suit against uh, the governor and the Department of Health, uh, alleging uh, a, a number of legal theories as to why those mask mandates uh, should not be in place. Um, ultimately, we had a preliminary hearing. We were unsuccessful in getting the court back in November of 21 to put an end to it, although even Judge Lanfear did find that children were being irreparably harmed because of these masks. Um, the, the, the efforts turned to the political and because hundreds of parents showed up at the uh, State House and put pressure on the General Assembly, that forced the governor, uh, the General Assembly forced the governor to put an end to it back in, uh, what was it about, March of 22. So now the case is still pending. And there's some efforts to get it dismissed on the basis that the case was moved, that there's no issue anymore. But the governor and the Department of Health and the AG's office, who's representing them, would not commit to the court that they wouldn't do it again. And so the court kept the case alive. Uh, we were trying to go through what was very contentious discovery. Um, but then it came to the point where um, the judge thought that we thought it would be a good idea to try to get this matter can I say hi? Sure. And um, that started back, I want to say maybe in April or so of this year. And uh, like, as, as I said, it, it, was a, it was a process. But here we are, finally. And, and let me just announce what the settlement is now. Um, there's three parts to it. Mm -hmm. The most important part is that the Department of Health has agreed to conduct a public hearing on the efficacy of masking in public schools. That is something, that is what we've been asking for for two years, over two years. Just give us a public hearing. Let the public debate the legitimacy, the efficacy of these masks. Um, because I, we're confident that when the, when the evidence comes forward in the proper setting, a uh, public health hearing, it's overwhelmingly going to show that masking in schools do, not only do not work, but actually have a deleterious effect on children. And over these last two years, we've been proven that our expert witness, Dr. Andrew Boston, has been saying for three years now um, that none of the studies show that masks work. In fact, they show the opposite. He has been 100% fully vindicated by the Cochrane Review Report that came out a few months ago. Um, it's unquestionable. Uh, and you can see it 
in, in, in your everyday lives. Uh, I was just on an airplane. No one, maybe you might see one person on a plane of 300 people wearing a mask, even though the current CDC director is telling everyone they should be masking. It's kind of like the, uh, the latest vaccine booster, less than 10% of people are taking it. People know it's over. People knew it was wrong. And what we just want a public hearing to put it, put it, put it on the public record so this doesn't ever happen again. So that's the most important first element. The second had to do with a memo that Rado had sent out um, back in August to all schools where it suggested that maybe there was a mask mandate if you tested positive for COVID. Uh, Rado kept saying, no, 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 there is no mandate. I said, well, you better send out a new memo that makes that explicit, and they've agreed to do that. And then the final piece is just, you know, we're going to enter a dismissal step, we're going to be mutual releases, just a typical uh, Laying, uh, you know, documents that are filed when you, when you dismiss the case. So th that's three elements of it, and we're really excited. Hopefully, sometime next spring, we'll, we'll try to get the word out that there will be a public hearing on this. I know people have moved on. There's so much more going on in the world today. But let's not forget how important this this part of it was. Well, and to, to, to dovetail on that, there's an entire generation of students right now who are, it's finally a public acknowledgement is taking place that this wasn't a minor inconvenience, that this has had potentially lifelong impact <clears throat> on their ability to learn, their ability to communicate, their social skills, virtually every aspect that, quite frankly, uh, groups like parents in Rhode Island were, were vilified for, they've been vindicated. And, so, on one sense, there's a sense of victory, but there, there's real tragedy here, too, isn't there? As people walk by wearing masks. <laughs> you, can't make, you can't make it. <laughs> That's their personal choice, and we respect it. Right. Well. <laughs> but, but talk about the tragic, lifelong, actually, Lori, maybe you can join us for a second here. Uh, as a parent, come on over in front. Um, as, as a Parents United here in Rhode Island, an organization that you've been a key part of since its inception, <clears throat> those parents realized early on what the potential was. Ta talk to us about how this has got to feel. Again, there's a dual aspect to it. Vindication, but at the same time, the frustration at the state's inability to understand the impact of their decisions. Well, I think the, the first part of this is, you know, so I'd like to celebrate with the, with the other Parents of Parents United Rhode Island, we did it. We triumphed and we brought back some common sense and some transparency in our government. And so that's, I think, the big takeaway here. Another thing is you can't back down. You can't let go. You can't give up because if you stay in there, you too, with the help of Super Attorney Gregory Pichirelli, outwit, outlast, and outplay seven state attorneys. So as far as the kids go, many of them are bouncing back. We're not seeing the skin infections anymore, of course, because the masks have been off. Um, but yes, there there were children who had special needs, speech path, speech needs that those needs weren't met, and they are slowly recovering. And then we have some, you know, learning loss because the students couldn't hear their teachers through the masking. And so we're hopeful that we can get these children back on track. Um, but I think that the most important thing that I'd like to focus on is when we get to this hearing, we still need your help, okay? We still need you to come down, we still need you to speak up, and it's gonna be okay. Thank you. And well, for, before you go, how can folks reach out to you? How can folks join? How can folks support you? Um, so we will be tweeting about this on our Twitter account, Parents United RI, and it is just the abbreviation. And uh, of course, you can always reach us through our attorney, Gregory Picciarelli, um, and Rick Southwell. Right? Yeah. How, do they, how do they get to you? You're the Mr. Star. Southwell, the step up for a second here. You're the tall guy here. I'm the Perfect. Star. Outside voice. Outside. Um, your name's on the on the door of this, um, in big bold lights. Um, how are you feeling now, and uh, what's the lesson here? Uh, so I feel happy that I stepped forward at the time because it was not an easy decision to make. Um, 
there were issues with, you know, there are a lot of uh, mask zealots out there. We didn't know, you know, employers were getting very uh, restrictive and kind of aggressive about pushing certain protocols. And so we didn't know what the, the impact was going to be. And, um, yeah, my wife and I had a long weekend of conversations about this, and I finally said to her, like, I'm built for this. It would be wrong for me not to do this. Right? You can't let the government push you around because you're afraid of what the consequences will be. Because when the bully comes to take your lunch money on Tuesday and you give it to him, he'll be back on Wednesday and then Thursday and every day after that until you punch him in the mouth. And you may not win the fight, but you got to take the swing and you got to push back. And that's what we did. Uh, so now, 26 months later, I can finally breathe a sigh of relief. I mean, the consequence phase is long since gone, but I did the right thing when it wasn't an easy thing to do. Uh, the parents, I remember, you know, we had the, the meeting with the parents, and there was a lot of anger in the room, not directed towards me, but um, just to the whole situation. And the one thing that I asked was that, you know, we not have anybody go braveheart, right? Just kind of keep this a rational, sane conversation, because that's the best way to distinguish yourself from what was going on in government. And... I, there, we've got the number of people that are on the, the suit by name, and then we've got a lot of people that were behind it, and everybody would just perform magnificently. And we came out of this looking really, really good. It took two years, uh, but we brought the government to heel. They're actually going to follow their own rules for implementing these times, kinds of protocols, so that means the public does get a say in what happens to their kids, and I think that's super-duper important, of course. Um, and it would be, you know, terrible of me not to mention all of the people who made this possible, right? I mean, one of the biggest impediments in this country to getting anything done is legal representation. Good, high-quality, excellent legal representation. And we got that uh, in Greg Petrilli. I, I can't – This none of this would have happened without him. Um, you know, he's got kind of this roster of cases that he's taken on, and he's got a pretty impressive resume during the COVID era. Um, but he was another one that was willing to, you know, swim upstream on this when it wasn't fashionable to do it, and um, changed a lot of a lot of policy and a lot of lives because of it. So we're grateful to him. We're grateful to Dr. Boston as well. Another one swimming upstream. He's in the medical profession. His wife works in the medical profession, and he was adamant uh, in his search for truth and what was accurate and real, not what people wanted you to believe. And he refused. Uh, to back down, and he took you know took arrows for it. Didn't have to, but he was doing what was right. And uh, it's nice to know that there are you know people out there that are willing to put themselves out there to do it. And so we're gonna have a very uh, interesting, informative uh, hearing at some point. Probably it looks like in the spring, late winter, early spring. The way the we're now on a statutory calendar, right? So there's a schedule that the state actually has to follow its own procedures and time frames for getting things done. Um, but having that public airing, and I would encourage any parent, whether you were in this lawsuit or whether you weren't, uh, who's got memories of what it was like through COVID and what it was like to put a mask on your kid every morning, even though you didn't want to and they didn't want you to, um, you know, I hope that you show up and, and make sure that the, you know, the Department of Health hears what you have to say and the, the damage that they did to your children and the damage that the legislator that you know, the legislators that ignored you did to your children, uh, what the governor did to your children, and um, let them know. And the next time this happens, because it will, um, step forward, push back, and don't let them get away with it. Not for a minute, because they'll keep doing it over and over again until somebody says no. To all of you, congratulations. Well fought, hard fought, battle. You can't fight City Hall, I guess, right? Well, one last thing, Pat, you come over here. Uh, what do you know? <laughs> none of us, none of this would have had the impact. <laughs> none of this would have had the impact without you. Pat. Yes, um, thank you, Pat. You know, I, I, I keep remarking the f one of the first days of hearing, come bumbling in. <laughs> like uh, John Candy and planes, trains, and automobiles. Yep. And, I hear and I'm sitting and I'm like, is this this guy? Who's this guy? Is he with us? And we, everybody told me you were a good guy. And you, you've done an amazing job. The video you've been able to take and put up and putting this up. And none of this would really count without your publicizing. 
Uh, so, yeah. um, we, and that's that, that's really the most important, important parts of this. Well, because you know, if a tree, a tree falls and nobody hears it, right? We've uh, all learned politically when it comes to whether it's parental rights, whether it comes to your political rights. Number one, if you don't understand your civil rights, you can't fight for them. And number two, if it didn't happen on video, it probably didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the world we live in today. So. It, it, it is so. Adapt, improvise, and overcome, and, and folks just deal with it. And so everybody out there, Coalition Talk Radio. Facebook.com slash the Coalition Radio. <laughs> on the Mighty Mighty Twitter, the Coalition <laughs> underscore well, he, he, Many more stories in Rhode Island that this man is following. Woonsocket, Pawtucket, I mean, you can go on and on. It's, uh, it's an adventure. Thank well, you thank you, back. folks. Thank you, Pat. Congratulations, everyone.